I'm making all the driver calls, I'm making all the strategy calls as to when to pit for fuel, tires, driver change, when we need to do maintenance on the car. I have a busy 24 hours and uh, with a little bit of Red Bull, we'll, we'll get it done. Sometimes we'll change the tires every stint if we need it, if we need the lap time. But these, these tires actually get pretty consistent pretty quickly. So Boring. I'm not too... I know, but that's why you came into the picture. As much as I make fun of him, he is the man that can get this done. He's the man who can get us laps back. He's the guy that keeps us all calm and keeps us in control. And without him getting too much of a big head, he's the best one on pit lane for this job. So he's our chief strategist. He's making all the calls. He's the guy you'll see up there with the headset on, talking to everybody, and running all his predictive models on the computer. And uh, it's pretty, pretty impressive to see him work. And you realize the fastest cars rarely win. It's the, it's the cars that spend the least amount of time in pit wins. And uh, you know, the 24 hours of Daytona, it's one on strategy. Uh, this is not a sprint race, this is an endurance race. And yes, you have to be on with the driving, the car has to be on as well. But at the end of the day, this is, uh, this is about calls in the pits. We don't know who our competition is until probably four hours left in the race. At four hours, you kind of reevaluate and say, these are the guys we have to watch out for. These are the guys that are fast. These are the guys that are not making mistakes. At one hour, then you really know who your competition is. And I, uh, I'm assuming it's gonna be a, a, a gaggle of Porsches. Fuck Porsche. Go BMW. The drivers are all set, the cars are all set, crew's all set, everything's, you know, everything's all organized. So now it's, uh, it's not up to us anymore. Um, it's really gonna be up to the drivers. It's the calm before the storm. But if you, if you look around, it's hard not to get excited because there's energy around here. There's people, there's fans. I have not seen so many Turner Motorsport fans, BMW fans, the infield's packed. It's, uh, it's gonna be tough just to get our cars from the pits onto the, uh, onto the racetrack because there's that many people. it's kind of nice to drive into the night. It's uh, everything sort of, I don't, I don't want to say quiets down, but uh, you know, all your peripheral goes away and you, you don't see all the people and you don't see all the chaos. And it's kind of a good time to just start clicking off laps and, and getting in a groove. Uh, these cars are going 175 miles an hour on the banking and uh, we're doing it at all hours of the night. So uh, it gets pretty hectic, right? There's a lot of cars out there. And uh, if you lose focus for even a split second, you can, uh, hit another car, have another car come up and hit you, miss a shift, miss a break point, and uh, your, race, your race can be done just like that. Out of the fuel, call up when the reserve comes on. Hit this lap, hit this lap. You can feel now people are getting tired. Uh, and uh, you know, still everybody's going full speed. It's, it's quite tough for us because we are four laps back. We are fighting like hell to make up ground, but it's really difficult because the competition is pretty strong here. Right? But you can feel also that the car, after uh, 11 hours now, 
know, has his little uh, things going on, so you have to start to adapt to the car shift a little bit different, be more sensitive to the brake and stuff like that. stop and we haven't had a yellow flag for like four hours so uh, now everybody's gonna come in and do the stuff that takes a long time like the brake pads and any kind of stuff that they've been waiting to do for a yellow unfortunately we just did our brake pads we did the stuff under green so we went some laps down we're down to one car just a 93 car the other car lost a motor early on and uh, the rules say you can't change the motor well, you're, once you put a motor in that's the motor you're using so that car is out we put all our resources to this car. Um, you know, we're just, we're some laps down. We're three laps down now, and it's been tough to try to get those laps back. Normally, we can get those laps back, work our way to the front. It just hasn't been happening. The drivers are doing a great job, you know, staying out of trouble. I don't think the car has a scratch on it. Mike's been fantastic. The Germans, I mean, the whole the whole package is there, but we're just some laps down. Um, if you look around, you see some, some, some eyelids kind of going down, but they're still in it. As soon as they hear something on the radio, they're up and they're ready for their job. Shifts are a little notchy and uh, it's definitely starting to wear. Uh, and like I said, the clutch is a problem. So, uh, so this is the most grueling part of the race. It's when it seems like it's never gonna end. Okay, coming around the corner. Bye bye. There you go. When the sun rises at Daytona, the entire race changes. It's a great feeling, right? It's a feeling of relief. It's actually not a sign of the end. It's a sign of kind of nearing the end. And as soon as you really see the sun hitting the, the, the stands, you see the first people filling up the stands, and uh, as they're gathering, it just the, uh, the electricity's there, the energy's there. No matter where you are in the track, if you're last, if you're in the middle and you're first, you get the same feeling. You're like, I want to be there at the end. This is awesome. That car uh, just just ran really good. We're out here, took the checker, and you can see Paul's happy, Mike's happy, the team's pretty happy. Uh, I'm disappointed, but I'm, I feel kind of accomplished. But I'm, I'm motivated. I want to take what we learned from this year and do it again next year. Anybody missing? Right here, guys. 